You're now live. Brilliant. Thank you. Morning. Welcome, everyone, to our uh, FBS chat with Paul Hanton, all the way from New Zealand, I believe, currently. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> and we're joined by Jonas, um, who's been with us before. Thank you, Jonas, for joining us again. And we All should, right. hopefully, Tara Gretton will be joining us from the lovely city of Bath. So kind of all over the world today, yeah. which is fantastic. Um, so, Paul, we haven't met before. I've read your wonderful book, which is sort of scrolling along the bottom of the screen there. Um, tell us a bit about how this um, journey came about for you in this solution-focused world. Okay, so um, when I left uni, uh, well, actually, I started at uni. When I was at uni, I was a welfare officer um, uh, for Student Union um, back in 1990, uh, 1990. And um, I was really involved in the kind of HIV campaign then, which, you know, um, for those of us that, that weren't around, then it was, it was huge. Hey, Tara. Hey, Tara. Um, and as part of my role as in the student union, I went off and did some basic counselling courses and um, EGAN skilled helper and stuff like that. And when I left uni, I went and worked in um, Greenwich um, in, in a, a, an HIV service in Greenwich. And then I went and worked at the Angel Drug Project in Islington, which at the time was the busiest street drug project in, in, in Europe. And as people probably don't remember, right back then, drug services were only just starting really um as a response to each other you know we, we we know and understand drug services now as as being part of our everyday life but they were new then and um we had a very transient population um mostly homeless sex workers um people with hiv people um, living with hepatitis and so on and um um the brief therapy center as brief was then um, in a little um, attic above a, 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 a building in London, we're, we're just starting running courses. They've been running courses for a couple of years. And um, our um, clinical director at the time felt that because we saw people for a short period of time, it would be a good idea to do something that we could do with them in that time. Sometimes we only saw people once, sometimes twice. Um, so we went off and did um, uh, a two-day training at the Brief Therapy Centre with Chris, um, Harvey, and Evan, um, and I, I, and that was that was quite interesting. I went with lots of questions, and um, uh, got into a bit of an argument the first day with with, with them all. Um, and uh, I, I remember it's funny because Harvey was um, Harvey's always left out of the whole kind of briefing. Really, it's Chris and Evan, but Harvey was there. And, and Harvey was such a social worker in his um, um, tweed jacket with his with leather, leather <laughs> elbow. Yeah, we know I, Harvey. I remember the first discussion that, you know, I, I took umbrage with. They showed these great videos and it was brilliant. And they said, we don't make any assumptions in the solution focus work. And I said, oh, that's bollocks. Of course you do. Um, <laughs> and, and they said, no, no, we don't. I said, well, you assume that people are there for something, don't you? And they said, oh, no, no, we don't make any assumptions. People are just there. And we've changed it over years, um, but, but we kind of had that. And I went away with all these questions, and I thought, oh, I'm not so sure about all this solution-focused stuff, um, but I'll give it a go. And I found um, initially working with people, um, scaling I found very useful. Um, that was probably how I started. And what I did was, um, after the first course, I made some um, little um, notes, some, um, I don't know what you call them, little cardboard note things. And um, I put them on back of a clipboard because um, we all used to counsel with clipboards in them days. Um, <laughs> and I used to have a clipboard on my on my my my, my knee and went, oh, scaling. And I put that one, I put it at the bottom. And, oh, exceptions. And I put that one at the bottom. Um, and, and that's how I started. And, and, and I kind of suppose, I don't think people got a very good deal from me at that point, but I was learning and taking it on. And for certainly for two years, I never used a miracle question. I used it once. And it went pancake on me. And I mm. thought, I'm not doing that again. Um, but I actually asked a young man, you know, if it, it, and you wake up and how do you know that, you know, um, this, was, this has happened? And he said, my granddad would still be alive. And I thought, well, I can't answer that. I don't know what to do. Um, of course, now it wouldn't bother me if, it, if, if he mm. said that. Um, but I thought, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. You know, I'm working with people who are um dying whose families are dying who are in real real dire straits and, and i can't do this miracle question thing um 
and anyway I, I ended up coming back to it a couple of years later but after that first session uh first two days were brief within about a year i went and did another couple of days with them and then um i just picked it up on it and i, I really liked it um it felt less intrusive it felt less um um I've always seen drug users, and 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 that's where I worked. You know, drug users and HIV as 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 my people. You know, I was a, a, a chronic drug user myself, um, and um, as, as a bisexual man living in London when HIV was around, I, I saw these these things where I was more of a peer. We don't talk about peers then, but I felt like I was a peer worker more than anything else. And so I didn't want to be up there. I wanted to be alongside people and um solution focus gave me that opportunity really um i was particularly um uk focused in my solution focus i came along with a whole load of people at the same sort of time um and so i didn't get that kind of whole american um gig and i certainly didn't get the to gig um and that, we'll talk about that maybe later <laughs> so that's how i started and that was in 1993 i did my first course wow so 23 years ago 27 years ago now mm. can i can i just can i just jump in and tara we were coming having this discussion before you joined but in 1993 i would have been 13 and i'm just going to mute myself <laughs> um as, as, as we say in, in covid fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> So um, when when did you um fully embrace the kind of whole process? Because I know you started yeah. with a bit of scaling, <laughs> an exception. Uh, when did when did you when did you decide I, I'm I'm gonna do you know the scaling, the exceptions, the miracle and then do a whole session like that? Oh, when I she was about fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two years later. <laughs> yeah it took me back two years and um I, I i very quickly stopped using the word miracle and started calling it the wonderful question and mm -hmm. um uh, that was that was um um i was brought up as a catholic and and, and that kind of um the whole miracle thing I, I wasn't comfortable with um and um um yeah so i started calling it the wonderful question and, and brief and and um um, Chris, Chris liked that, and Bill O'Connell, who I'm going to talk about a little bit because Bill, Bill is a hero of mine. Um, Bill O'Connell embraced the word "wonderful" as well, and um, so I started to have my own kind of preferences around how solution focus was um, for me. And uh, I've always been very the, the whole descriptive side of it has always been my my particular bent, you know. Um, um, before. I think before and many people were saying that I was talking about this detailed description, really doing that work. Um, I've never been a real philosopher or a real kind of um, Wittgensteinian or, you know, Foucault or anything like that. So I've always been about, you know, the practical side of it. Mm. And I think Paul, so how did, I'm really interested to hear how that, oh, sorry, just no, jumping in there. I'm just to say my Wi-Fi is dipping out a lot, so I'm sorry if I'm like frozen and funny looking faces. But um yeah, it's just really interesting to hear more about that wonderful question. So what that kind of looks like when you used wonderful instead of miracle. So I, I, I wouldn't say a miracle happened, I'd just say so um you, you know, you went to sleep and something wonderful happens. And and and, and this okay. wonderful thing is that but but basically um you know you wake up and and the problems you've got or well, the other thing i started to do quite early was i started to qualify the wonderful question so i didn't have that i mean i remember a debate about it right back then um and de Shazer and so were saying you don't qualify it. you just say you know a miracle happens and whatever comes out of that mm. I, I felt that was um i felt it was a bit fairyland um so so what i did was i'd say things like so you woke up and your drug problem had started to go away or you woke up and and so i i, I made it more specific um i felt yeah, that that definitely was mm. real um mm. and i remember having debates with people and they were saying to me no 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 but you don't don't qualify it that's sure that's expert led that's this that's that i didn't think it was because i felt somebody was coming mm. well it's situation yeah 
And it's fine if you're using their words, if you're inserting their yeah. hopes, then you know it's you. They're still the expert in the conversation. I think so. I think so. Um, and I just felt. Um, I, I guess it was more specific for me. It was something I could could work with in a more um, concrete way. Um, I'm quite a concrete, but I'm not very abstract. Um, I'm not RP, I'm not abstract. I'm not any of those things. Um, Paul, I've got a question. Um, just listening to you now, and it really resonates with, we've had a lot of discussions uh, recently, uh, and uh, you seem to have this critical side to you, which I really love, which is kind of unusual in the solution focused world, to be critical, like you're going against Harvey, you know, on the on the first day almost, and, and now you're changing the words and doing things on your own and t having these debates, and that kind of that was what introduced me to you. That's, this is this guy from New Zealand doing these, asking you know strange questions and being a bit of a, you know, what's you know what could we be doing better and, be, and looking at ourselves and from a critical point of view. Where does that come from, and and and, and where's the passion for for the, the critical nature of your approach to social? Freedom? What, what does that? Where does that come from, and and maybe why? Why do you do it? I I, I just find Whoa. that fascinating. That's, that's a, a big, big ask. I mean, look, um, I, I started a, a book with um, Elia and um, Raya and Adam um, called Heresy and Misconduct in the Solution Focused World, and it didn't get published. We decided not to publish, so I did a, a YouTube channel on it. Um, I don't mean to be critical. It's, it's not a, It's not an end in itself. Um, I, I think critical is a good thing, by the way. I, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I just say I, I, I don't set out to be critical. It's just how it is. Right. So um, I, you know, um, I work in a, a therapeutic community um, that's um, which has its own sort of model. And one of the things about therapeutic communities is this idea of rational authority. So not authority for authority's sake, but authority that can be questioned, and that, that you know the things we do have have, have rational have rationale, and people can ask us. And I grew up um, probably without much rationale. I, I grew up being told this is what you do this is when you do it um um i've just seen the facebook use that's nice um um and you know i was i was a bit of a troublemaker as a kid i, I was very much um, um bullied and, and and didn't have a great great um experience of childhood and then um i joined the army and um then after the army i, I went to prison um so i've always had this situation where people have told me what, what, what to do, do. Uh, and mm. uh, I don't like being told what to do. I don't like telling other people what to do. I think if I, uh, as, as a manager, as, as, as a leader, I think that I should be able to explain everything I do and why I do it and um, have people question and, and, and be questioning. And when it came to solution focus, um, I just saw some things that I felt were a little bit um, stayed. So, you know, when the EBTA protocol first came out and said, you can't do research unless you do it like this, I'm like, says who? You know, um, and when, when somebody says, you know, if you don't, you know, if you don't know Wittgenstein, you don't know solution focus, I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, um, I, I, I just don't like that side of it. I've seen people doing solution focus without knowing it's solution focus. And I've seen some really, really well-known solution focus practitioners doing what I would call solution forced work. Um, yeah. So I, I just think that it's mm. if you do things without questioning, you might as well just roll mm. over, you know. And and Paul, sort of taking that sort of approach, what difference do you think that's made to your practice, and how do well, your the people that you work with benefit from that? Um, I think it makes me not be static. I think it makes mm. me um, question what I do and why I'm doing it, and mm. um, it leads me always to. Um, being alongside rather than in front of somebody. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I love that, I being hope. alongside. Mm. Wow. Yeah, and, um, even in, in in the book that you, you write about a client sort of all the way through it, uh, and it's got this nice sort of uh, beginning and end, but you kind of, you, 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 you're critical of yourself, which is, I mean, and, and me and Aisha always say we learn from every single client. We're not, we're definitely not the expert in that sense. And it was really refreshing to see that you're saying, I asked a question and it just didn't work. 
Mm-hmm. And, and that's the same at work now. You know, um, I, I made a big muck up at work yesterday, actually, with, with one of our residents. And, um, you know, I went into a community. So we've got 16 or uh, 14 people sat there. And I said, look, you know, um, I made this mistake. You know, um, mm-hmm. I'm sorry about it. And as a result of that, you know, this is what you can do. You know, so it was actually somebody's end date. You know, people are in our, 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 our house for, um, you know, months at a time. And I got the week wrong where somebody was going to finish. And um, he thought he was going to finish this week. And in fact, he finishes in two weeks. So I said, look, I wrote that on our board wrong. Mm-hmm. And um, you can finish this week if you, if you want to. Um, and it might be beneficial for you to stay longer. Um, but, you know, I, I, I own that. I made that mistake. We work with people. I've always worked with people at disadvantage. I've always worked with people that are stigmatised. And people um, go through life being told this is how it is and you can't challenge the system and you can't break it mm-hmm. and you can't you know, do anything outside of it. And what we do in our place now is we try and lead people to understand that, that actually their lives can be different and they do have a right to challenge and they do have a right to question and they do have a right to self-autonomy and solution focus is is the most self-autonomous therapy that i know of um mm. even more so than person-centered person-centered is self-autonomous but it kind of for me um doesn't have any um necessary direction whereas i think solution focus has direction from the start by best hopes you know preferred future type questions mm. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with that. And in my work in schools, you know, Aisha and Joe, you know, with young people, inviting them to know that they are allowed to ask questions. You know, so much is done to them and quite often they don't know any different. Well, I've worked in people's services most of my my career, Mm. actually. So um, I've run uh, three or four young people's drug services, um, you know, in Barnsley, in Wakefield, um, in, in, in Islington. Um, so, so you know, um, young people, drugs, all of that stuff. I, I, I do think that you know, um, uh, you know, people end up where they need to be. You know, um, and and I've ended up doing the sort of work I, I, I need to do. Um, I, I'm not that interested in um, um, being a big name. I'm not that interested in 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 doing loads of keynotes. I'm, I'm you know, I, I just I like what I do. I've, I've got the best job in the world. So, you know. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what that difference that makes. I mean, you and I are similar in that way because we, we are not consultants. We're, we're not selling, you know, services. We're just doing work with people yeah. in, a, mm-hmm. in a statutory environment. I, tried um, it. I, tried, I worked for myself for six years. Um, yeah. I, I found it very difficult. So what difference does it make? I mean, I, I've got some answers to that, but I want to hear yours. So working in the field, I mean, working long term in your area, what the difference does that make uh, when adopting or using a solution focused approach? Well, it's interesting because um, in my job, um, solution focus is just part of it. Um, we, we work in a, in, a, in, a, in a way called community as method. So um, our, our community heals itself. But what will happen is solution focus comes in um, in a much more informal way. So we don't have very many one-to-one therapy sessions. So, you know, somebody might say in, in, in a group setting, you know, oh, you know, I, I just want to stop using drugs and I want my life to be better. And I say, oh, well, so if, if it was better, you know, what, what what difference would that make? You know, what does that look like mm-hmm. better? So I would be throwing in solution-focused kind of questions or techniques or um, thoughts within a, a generic system. Now, what difference it makes to me is... Um, Ah, I don't want to get too deep, really, but 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 I, I have this real passion. Um, I felt in my life, and 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 you know, some people may, you know, other people in my life may not agree. Um, but I felt very disadvantaged at times in my life. I felt um, I felt um, hopeless in in times of my life. And and you know, when I was young, um, I made a couple of serious attempts on my life and and stuff like that. Um, and I'm glad I'm where I am now. And I feel mm. that, um, you know, I need to earn a living. I need to, to enjoy my life. But I also can do that in a way where I'm helping other people. Um, mm. So so why wouldn't I? You know, I don't, I don't see any point in, in, in doing that. You know, I don't care how many books I write or how many, um, how many accolades I get. What I care is that somebody walking down the road forgets that I had an input in my life and, and that's actually doing really well and yeah. can get somewhere. You know, yeah. and, 
I love that. And I mean, Paul, we've we've never met, you know, I think this is the first time that we've kind of had a conversation. And one of the things that I noticed so much about you from sort of being connected when we first connected on social media was your generosity. And actually, you know, I feel like I know you because you've interacted and encouraged me and and even looked at my website and kind of gave me some pointers on it. And um, so generous. And yeah, so that sort of really resonates. I feel like I know you, you know, because you've- I'm not very so comfortable much. with praise. I'm not very comfortable with praise. <laughs> ah, <that>. take it. <laughs> um, I, 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 I have to second what Tara is saying, actually, because I feel like I know you, but I don't know you. And it, it is honestly, yeah, every time I've posted something, you're 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 one of the first ones. And you, Jonas. But it's not about you. This is about Paul. Um, <laughs> but honestly, Paul, you're, you're amazing, and and you're a Batman fan, and you're a Tottenham fan, so. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't see myself as generous. I just see myself as being supportive. And, and you know, I've got a very, very simple philosophy, and I've talked about this with Jonas, I think. Um, I, 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 I try to be the manager I'd like to have. I try to be the dad I'd like to have. I try to be the friend I'd like to have. And, and that's a very simple philosophy. Um, and, you know, um, that, that being said, my wife calls me a Marmite man. Um, so... There was a, a, an advertising campaign in, in, in UK a few years ago about Marmite and either you love it or you hate it. And, and I can get up people's noses. I'm aware of that. Um, not everybody likes me and likes my style. But you know what? I don't give a shit. Um, I, I really don't. Well, <laughs> so. I, really, I really like Marmite, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, there's this thing about being your authentic self. And... Um, mm. Not everybody's going to like that. Um, I, I, I can state absolutely 100%, but I never go out of my way to cause anybody any problems. That being said, I'm not going to sit back where I see injustice, where I see hypocrisy, um, and and that's that's lost me lost me friends and contacts and colleagues, and, and I'm never going to be that big name because actually um, sometimes you have to suck it up, and I'm not prepared to suck it up. Mm. Mm. Uh, Hmm. So do you? Well, think, yeah, go on. Go on, Jonas. No, I, um, I just love that. Um, mm. I, I, I think there's a punk attitude to solutions focus work, uh, and then you embody it completely. <laughs> so I, I think we'll be all writing about. I mean, in, in 50 years time, people always people have forgotten about Steve Deshays and people like Paul Hanton used to say. <laughs> yeah. um, there's, okay. something, there's something punkish, I think, in the in the solution focus mm. approach. We really believe everybody's right to be whoever yeah. they are. I love that, uh, yeah. And yeah. their they're authentic mm. self. And, and mm. if we can't embody that ourselves and that makes us, then we have a problem, I think. So I think Look, I, you're on to something. That we've, we've discussed this, Jonas. You know, I, I, I see... Um, Mum, is that a British thing of over in New Zealand? <laughs> okay, so, so let me just answer that question. So Marmite was 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 invented by England, okay? In New Zealand, they got the patent on it. So they call it Marmite here, but it hasn't really Marmite. It's some slight difference. So oh. here, we have to call it My Mate instead of Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the same jars with a different name. But anyway, no. so it's My Mate. Um, and so then Vegemite, so, obviously, in Australia. Uh, Ugh, I don't so, like Vegemite, yeah. So, so, okay, so, so this, this thing, you know, um, and I don't want to get really, you know, sort of um, heavy about this, but I despise hypocrisy. Um, if, if, I, if I do something and say something and I contradict myself, then I need to own that shit, and I will own that shit. And, and I, I, I do make mistakes, and I do do... You know, um, I don't always reach my own standards, my own moral compass. And I think I've, I've got an obligation when I don't to, to, to acknowledge that. Mm. I see some, you know, I, I left the, the SF list recently. And um, I left the SF list because um, it was toxic. Um, and, and, and I'm not going to, you know, name any people in particular. Um, but I, I had um, somebody completely um, ridicule me for mental health issues um and and i i was incredibly upset by it actually more mm -hmm. so than, than people realized um and and um you know there's family mental health issues as well and somebody really took the the, the, the piss out of that um and was quite nasty and the response from 
maybe half of people on there was to to get over it paul stop being so sensitive and and all this stuff um and that's the same response as people get in black life matters it's the same response as people get in um disability and i'm not prepared to do that and if you think i'm a woke warrior if you think i'm social justice left or whatever i don't give a flying shit mm. to be honest with you mm. um i will not put up with that sort of stuff and so when somebody says they're solution focus and um they're taking part in that stuff they're not solution focused they might be using solution focused questions but they are not solution focused because for me solution focused therapy and practice is a leveling um, um, um set of techniques so it's a leveling modality and you cannot you cannot sit and, and, and on social media and say that you're against gay marriage and then say i'm solution focused because if the next person who walks in your room says uh, my best hopes are to be married with my partner in, in a mm. world that accepts us. And you say, oh, yes, and how will that look different? And you're thinking all the time, you know what, you're wrong. This is immoral. Then, then fuck you. You're not solution focused. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's why we need to revisit the assumptions so much more. You know, we really need to remind mm. people of what truly underpins the solution mm. focused approach. Yeah. You know, and, you know, coming from a social work background and those being the values and ethics of social work, you know, that's what kind of led me into solution focus yeah. because I felt that the that it, that it really resonated with my solution, yeah. uh, with my social work values. So I think mm. it's really important that we kind of revisit and remind people what the assumptions are of for SF. But yeah, totally I'm just going to, yeah. Totally yeah. yeah. agree with you, Tara. You know, um, as I say, I come from a kind of um, drug drug work HIV background, and um, you know you can't hold values that are opposed to equality and and call yourself solution focused. You, you can't, you know. Um, and there's people out there, big names out there that, that do that. And I'm not prepared to, to to be part of that shit. And if it means that I'm not part of the solution focused community, if it means that I'm not going to be welcome in certain associations, so what? Don't need them. Mm. I think what's exciting as well uh, is that more people speaking out and sort of professionals and adults modelling this is, you know, the conversations that I have with young people, particularly around the times, you know, around Black Lives Matter, they're really thinking about how do I speak up? How do I raise my head? How do I do it in a really useful and constructive yeah. way? So I think in that sense, we need to be modelling it and we need to be Great. showing, young, you know, that it's OK to talk, to speak up and and stick up for people it, it, absolutely but then you know and, and as i say if you're on a, a, a list that's supposed to be all these like-minded individuals and you're ridiculed and you're marginalized for speaking out then that tells me there's something wrong in in, in mm. that in that kind of um community um and not everybody there's some real people supported and some real people mm. spoke out and and stuff but but actually um I, I'm I'm pretty upfront and I'm pretty you know I've been through quite a lot of stuff in my life, but I didn't feel psychologically safe to be on that list anymore, and mm -hmm. and that's how, that says to me that's and I'm I'm quite out there. So there's lots of other people who are less out there than me, but probably felt unsafe, and that's not okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a there's a shift happening in the solutions focus world um, just the last couple of years. And it's really come up to a head this year, really, after, after George Floyd's uh, tragic murder. Yeah. Um, um, and this thing happening on the list is only one um, symptom of, of this change that's happening. Uh, there's also, you know, the, the, the journal, um, how they're changing their, their uh, appearance and their, you know, yeah. how they modern themselves. The, uh, we have the upcoming SFBTA conference, which is very big on diversity. Yes. Um, and making that very clear. Now, yeah, now. yeah, 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 yeah. It's taken a while, but it's, there's a lot happening, and that's really good. It really so think, is, and, and yeah. I think you are you have been part of that movement and that change. Mm. I mean, you have the the, the collective and the, lots of lovely other. There's lots of other things going on. People are much more clear and um, connecting solution focus to social injustice, um, morality, really, you know, yeah. and, and authenticity, and and yes. you know, and really owning the work in a more in a social context um, yeah. and some of that's about younger people coming into his profession to be it is, it is. And, and i welcome that <laughs> like aisha yes <laughs> yes <laughs> and actually i think there is a generational me. gap no not me sadly <laughs> but I, I, I actually the the fun thing was joe and i had just just 
signed up oh, to yes. that list. Oh yeah, and then it went up. Do you remember Tara? I, I remember I was so Tara upset. like, "What the hell's going on?" We, <laughs> we were like, "What's going on?" We just signed up, you know, enthusiastic. Yeah, come on. And then all of a sudden, like, sorry, what's going on? <laughs> it's like mummy and daddy are fighting. I can't, I can't deal with this. No, I, I agree, but you know, there is this. Um, and I'm I'm part of it, you know. I, I can't deny my whiteness. I can't deny my age. I can't deny my gender. And actually, you know, white fifty plus men have controlled solution focus for a long time, and um, it's almost hypocrisy for any white fifty plus man to even question that. But you know, it's got to change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Elliot was a big part of that. Elliot was a huge part of that, coming along and, and challenging the status quo. You know, there's people like. Um, Kirsten Deerhoff, uh, you know, who, who's done some fantastic yes, work in the yeah. folk school, who was kind of just bypassed for being a woman, you know, um, and mm. it's okay. Yeah, I, I think we should, we could even be start rewriting the history of Solutions Focus as well, because I think the story that's come from Solutions Focus, you know, it's from the 90s and where they build their own identity and then they kind of nurture what Stephen Insu said, and, and it's done in a way that perverts really. The, the creativity of the approach and how they yeah. work together with their clients and how they learned with their clients mm. and how they actually took a social injustice position already in the early 80s and uh, the late yeah. 70s. Why did they even do what they did? Well, because exactly. they didn't think what was, what was going on was right. For exactly. Uh, they wanted <laughs> yeah. their clients to be more respected uh, yeah. and they wanted to be more, uh, uh, make a better contribution to, yeah. to yeah. the yeah. practice. Uh, and that was, uh, and that, and that's also a story of solutions focus, which we haven't really heard. Uh, and there are other stories in there as well. I mean, well, there's a reason why they call it his yeah, go story. On, go on, it's your thing. You should go. There's a reason why they call it history, his story, you know? Uh, yeah. And, and that's the reality of it. And, um, you know, for many years, I was very uncomfortable with um, people who said, oh, well, Steve said this or Insu said this. I, I don't know if Steve or Insu said that. But I know that actually um, by saying that and saying I was, you know, I was at lunch once with Steve 56 years ago and he said to me, blah, blah, blah. Um, that gives you some sort of divine right to then, then pontificate on what solution focus is. No, it's yeah. not. Every, every, um, <clears throat> every therapeutic approach becomes better by the inclusion of the voices that weren't there originally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. um, Sorry, I'm asking my five-year-old to be quiet while I read this. Um, so Mark, Mark Mark, is asking, so is SF different from other approaches I meant concerning diversity? Uh, right, okay. So in March next year, um, we are having a, a solution focus conference in New Zealand. It's our sixth conference, and it's called Inclusive, Inclusivity and Diversity in the Solution Focus World. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, somebody, I don't know where this quote came from, but somebody um, actually said once that solution focus um, um, is, is the most kind of diverse therapy and it's the most inclusive. Um, I, I don't know about that as a claim. What I would say is this. If you start from a position of everything that happens in our interaction is your agenda, is your mm. best, practice, is your preferred future, then that in itself is inclusive. Mm. If you acknowledge that the people you're working with can have hope, can have determination and, uh, and the locus of control, regardless of the world they live in, then that's inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Joe, do you want to jump in? I was, <coughs> no, I was Sorry, just Sorry, my daughter's it. trying to feed me sweet corn. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I'd <laughs> like to say, if, if, if I may, um, I think we have a real problem in Solutions Focus. Most of our conferences are extremely white. Mm. Uh, we have uh, lots of people from other cultures, other world parts of the world. We just don't get invited to things mm. um, okay. who are never cited. Um, mm. And I think we have a problem with diversity. I think other pro we could be mm. learning from other approaches. Um, yeah, um, I mean, I think what's... more than what we do. I mean, and we we kind of put ourselves in this bubble where we kind of think that we are the best mm. and we have the most cherished approach and we know exactly how yeah. to deal with all this because because we are so loving. You know, but our you clients know, but... are the best clients. But, but I think it works really because mm. we could be learning from how guys. Sorry, sorry, go on. sorry, very, very, no, no, sorry, very quickly. Joe, do you need to go? Yeah, I do. I've got uh, something's just come up, but oh, you go, you go. 
Bye. I'll see you later. Bye. 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 Oh, Jonas. Let's go, Miss Gunn. Sorry, Jonas. Jonas. I'm here. I'm here. I didn't go anywhere. I've got the power. I can take you out, put you in. Sorry, carry on. Thank you for, thank you for bringing me back. The powers of the internet. Um, but I, I was just going to say. Go on, well, go on. Carry on. You couldn't well, stop, Chelsea. Well, well, sorry. So I was just, you know, kind of listening to both your comments there. And as Paul was describing in terms of our practice, you know, it being oh, so, I mean, every ounce of my being is, um, our hope is, is about inclusive, being inclusive and, and about to, in, in my practice. And it just saddens me really that, and we do need to change, but it's like we're spending a lot of energy, you know, having to work with this issue within the solution focused community that that isn't visible, you know. So I'm really excited and pleased that there are things like the SFPTA conference and the SF24 conference was, you know, welcoming a, a global community and noticing what's happening in Asia and just like, whoa. So, you know, I think it, these things that are happening are exciting and that change needs to happen because I think um, we need that as well as being um, that in our practice, you know? Um, I, I think there's a really good um, uh, differentiation, um, Tara. I think our practice is 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 inclusive. I think mm -hmm. our um, macro world in solution focus is not inclusive. It's becoming mm -hmm. something it's not. I don't belong to any association anymore. Um, I, I just don't. Um, and, and the reason is I, I actually don't feel, um, I feel very exclusive. I feel that as, as a white 50 plus male um, being part of an association, whenever I get involved in something, I, I, I get really involved in something. And I don't want to be that face. I don't want to be the person out there fronting stuff. I'm, I'm not interested. Um, a few years ago, before the collective, um, the Solution Voice Collective started, uh, I set up an Aotearoa New Zealand um, collective website um and and you know trying to, to 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 push that agenda i think we can do things that are not necessarily um visible i, I i'm a little bit <laughs> it's back to the critical stuff jonas i'm a little bit critical of, of of people making big statements about how how inclusive they're going to be i think you can do things without doing that so for instance you know our conference we've always had it uh, as a not-for-profit low-cost conference we we um, Māori people in New Zealand are uh, much more poor generally than, than, than Pākehā, or white people. And so you have a low-cost conference, which, which says you actually then encourage people who don't have a lot of disposable income to come to that conference. You know, you make a statement on your um, website saying that we really welcome um, abstracts from first-time presenters, but, you know, um, Māori people, people from rainbow community. You can do things without making a big hoo-ha about it. You know, you can, and I think, um, here's where I lose more friends. Um, I think some of some of the latest things that are happening in the solution focus world, overdue, overstated, and kind of a little bit, um, um, look how good we are now. We've got a lot of work to do. Not good yeah. enough, more to do. <laughs> yeah. Elliot, you know, I can't speak for Elliot, but I can say that Elliot felt quite excluded by the SFBTA for many years. And um, um, and, and now they're, they're making big kind of um, moves towards being inclusive. You know, I can say that, um, you know, on the list there were people making very, very um, positive comments supporting Elliot and, and other people when they'd in, in the background in the past made very negative and disparaging comments about them. You know, so, you know what, um, I'm, I'm all for change. People can change. I, I recognise that. I, I made loads of change myself. Um, I think there's, a little, there's, there's, there's a different story too. I mean, we can talk about our conferences and our journals and our associations and all that bit. But I think there's also, you know, working in our local community mm. and, and dealing with diversity um, yes. and seeing the injustices and Yes. And offering to be a part of something else. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's there's something about that that needs to be said too. I mean, how can we be more active where we live in our in our communities or in our world yeah. and just see the connections and not put ourselves in that bubble where we just say, no, I'm mm. just working with you uh, and uh, working with your best hopes. And that's it. 
Yeah. I think we need to put ourselves in a in a bigger picture, yeah, community wise at least, and say, look, can we offer I, something? Can we do something yeah. here to make this world just a little bit better? And yes. I think we do that regardless if yeah, we do something I, or not. That really, choice is always there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. can't deny it. Yeah, and I, I think I think for me, it's really important to just scream out aloud. It's it's for everyone, for all human beings, rather. And not say, oh, you know, you're a black guy. Come in. We need more. Yeah. You know, we need to show your face. You know, and because then actually that's being racist by trying not to be racist. Yeah, if you know what I mean. And, um, but then the sad, absolutely. But then the but then when you try and do something a little bit more, again, this is going to sound terrible. And we hope no one's watching. Um, you know, you can, but you can try and include as many people as you as you possibly want. And Jonas and Tara are, are witness to this. When we did the sing along, and we can't reveal too much, guys, as you know. But I did actually go out of my way to make it as diverse as possible. Mm. But we weren't successful, were we? No. But do, do you see what I mean? So I think as long as as us as human beings have an open forum. And make sure that everyone gets an invite. And it's not about counting how many people from Singapore, how many people right. from Africa. Mm. It's just literally, if you're a human people, if you're a human being, you're invited without mm. having any other agenda. That's all we can do. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I mean, I always revert it back to young people because I work with young people. But, you know, young people taking the lead and, and you know, what... what I've been working with with some young people recently is they're actually genuinely visible they're that they're genuinely having a say because for years within social services it's like invite people along and it's it's tokenistic you yeah. know it's not actually are you genuinely yeah. he hearing or yeah. interested in hearing what people want to say and genuinely wanting to include people for the right reasons so, and I'm, I think community is the best place James, so I, I work in a therapeutic community so we're we're, we're, we're always short staff we're always trying to employ new people it, it's, it's a very difficult job mm. um one of the things I've, I've I, I do which nobody's done in in, in our place before is when we interview people, it starts with being with a resident. Okay, so the residents of, of a current community will ask questions of a candidate. Um, they will sit in there, and um, sometimes it's a baptism of fire for the candidates. But you, you know what? If you can't put yourself in that position where you're willing to be um, um, open to, to, to that, then you have no place in, in, in my workplace. It's as simple mm -hmm. as that. Um, we, we opened um, a transition house for, for people who are leaving our community, but then going off into the world in, in a new way because they've, um, they're, 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 um, they're, um, they're, uh, they're stigmatized. Drug users are stigmatized in the community. You know, um, they've often have, have criminal histories. And this is where my passion comes from in this really, because uh, it, it's me too. You know, um, they have criminal histories. They can't be successful in life again unless somebody accepts them. So one of the things we've done is we've opened a transition house where people can stay for six months independently, mm -hmm. and still connected to us. And and that means they have the opportunity to bridge that, that, that gap. Now, we're making a, a huge loss. Um, I have to justify it to my board every month. You know, we're making a huge loss because we don't have enough residents in there to pay it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm quite prepared to, to, to write that off, you know, because I think it's what we're doing is more important than balancing the book sometimes. We can afford it, so we'll do it. Um, and those are the sort of things that I think Jonas is talking about. These are the things that nobody needs to know about. But you yes. know in yeah. your own heart you're doing yeah. something right, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, when somebody, you know, phones up and says, uh, Oh, I don't know. Um, I can't get into to the aftercare group today because I haven't got any money. And I say, mm. I'll pick you up. You know, mm. um, those are the sort of little things that actually make a difference. Mm. Uh, and, and, and as solution focused practitioners and somebody running a conference or whatever, if somebody can't afford to come, we need to make it happen. We need to look for reasons to include people, not reasons to exclude them. Mm. Yes. Go on, Aisha. You can talk, I uh, No, I was going to say, you know, we run a charity, we work with many people, yeah. and, 
you know, we want to come to New Zealand, just saying, just putting it out there. <laughs> <laughs> she told me she my... wants to come to New Zealand. You know, <laughs> nobody can get into New Zealand. I was going to say, I, nobody can get, it won't be for a while. The thing is, I'm going to bring Tara and join us with me as well. Oh, yes. well I, guess, I just want to say this, we've just elected uh, a left-leaning government with, with the queerest um, parliament that we've ever had um, in the world. You know, mm. we've got... Um, We've got the Greens taking over Auckland Central. While the world will lurch to the right, we've eased further to the left. And go Jacinda. Oh, yes, love. Can you tell her that I love her? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be her friend. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a great idea. Can I take that idea, Paul? Could be great for community members. I, I don't have any ideas that are mine. Just take what you want, whoever it is. Do, do what it's you Mark. like. It's Mark. It's our Mark. Um, <laughs> It's it's yeah. Mark is Mark's always looking for top tips and ideas of how we can get how we can support his community to get together, promote diversity, equality, mm -hmm. and um, he's one of the most hardworking men I know. Really, he's mm -hmm. always on the ball, and he watches FBS chat all the time, yes. um, and is always asking questions and trying to develop himself. I think is brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't what, copyright me. I don't copyright me. I don't hold my stuff. You know, anybody can have my stuff. No, I, 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 as Tara and bo both Tara and Jonas know, I always say I'm an honest thief. I'm going to tell you I'm taking it and then I'm going to use it, but I will put your name to it. It's all good. Yeah. But yeah, I am if, you go on, on, if you go on research, Gate, I've got all, um, uh, not all, but uh, many of my presentations and stuff like that are on research, Gate, and people can just use them. I don't care. It's fine. Yeah, you don't like that, yeah. Okay, guys, we've got 10 minutes, so. Go for it for 10 minutes. Yeah, right. Paul, I'm, just, yeah, I'm really interested to hear more about what you're up to in your, in your current role and if you've got any other projects that you're working on. What exciting things have you got brewing there in New Zealand? Okay. So um, my current role is um, I'm CEO of, of St Mark's Therapeutic Community. It's a 20-bed residential setting for... Um, um, uh, it's, I don't want to make it sound too dramatic, but 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 the highest end of 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 drug and alcohol use in this country. So people come to us, um, or they're in prison, or they die. Um, you know, we take people with quite serious um, um, problems. We run as a, a community as method type um, um, approach. So we're seen as 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 community members, and and very much we're hands off, and and we just help help direct and guide. Um, We've got a, an aftercare house, which I told you about, which is I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. um, we just set up a mentor scheme. Um, so we've got our first two mentors. So people have graduated a program that um, um, are now staying on as mentors and supporting the rest of the community. Um, so one of the things we do, which again, I think is, is challenging um, stigma and stuff. Um, one of our, our mentors at the moment, we've managed to get the courts to um, put off a, a, a sentencing date so that he can do good work in our community and hopefully that will be wow. a benefit when, when, when he goes up to court eventually. Mm -hmm. um, we, um, I'm part of a, a conference organising group. We're one of our six New Zealand um, Aotearoa conference, you know, and that includes um, Rob Silver, Wanda Douglas, Kate Walton. We, we started that up about, well, six years ago, funny enough, um, and, and that was in, in direct response to... Um, trying to, to, to build a solution focused um, um, New Zealand, really. Um, I, I've got some, I can't really an, announce yet, but I can say that I've oh, actually got a, a very- just cool, us. You it's don't just want to announce, we won't tell anyone. It's, it's, it's a very just big, that. a very big whisper, whisper. Yeah, I've been asked to be involved in training a very big um, NGO across the country over a period of two years. Um, which is actually um, logistically we haven't sorted out, but it actually means that um, nearly all my annual leave for the next two years will be taken up training. Um, um, but, but it's 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 actually for this country, it's going to be very big if it comes off. Um, well, we are here to help you. Paul. Yeah, we can come over and help you. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> I mean, uh, jo Jonas, get your passport ready because I know yours is running out, expiring. Yes. Tara, I'll pick you up on the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, Open your front door in 14 hours. I'll <laughs> be there. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so hopefully we will open the borders again soon. Um, but, you know, we've, we've done what we need to do to do it. Um, 
so so you know I'm, I'm i tend to get involved with things um and, and my wife was just saying to me um, um this morning sue she was saying you know how do you do everything and, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm an active relaxer i like to be busy um mm -hmm. sometimes i need to balance that with a bite off more than i can chew um mm -hmm. and that that's happened a few times um i don't have any um personal um um things um in in terms of of, of sf but um you know i don't want to don't write any more books or anything like that in particular um i do a lot of coaching in badminton and um, um I'm, I'm using more and more a solution focused approach to, to the coaching um, and and i'm involved at a, a, a reasonably high level in, in in that coaching in this country um, hold on quick question so is it what difference would it make if you actually won this round <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> uh, it's more in the um, it's more in the coaching, not in, in games. So it's more in uh, you know when somebody's trying a technique, and, and you know. Um, so how do you know when you've got that right? You know what would what will you notice? Stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I also say things like you know how would your opponents notice that you know you're at the top of your game? You know what would th those sort of things? And um, yeah, so, so you know um, there's that side of it. Um, I've recently got a dog, which I was just like, about to ask about the dog. I was going to um, ask whether and, we were going to get to meet the dog. She's fantastic. I'll, I'll ask it. Crookie! <laughs> Crookie! Is it Crookie? Hey, Crookie, yeah. They want to meet Crookie. <laughs> Come on, Crookie! So she, she's um, absolutely right. She's, she's a. Yeah, a bit, reducing a bit of stigmatization. She's grand rescue. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey, hello. <laughs> so she's from a grand uh, rescue. So she mm -hmm. never raced because she was too belligerent to race. Um, oh, I wanted to see. I, I missed her. I was writing FBS oh, chat with Cookie, Cookie Hanson. Oh, hello. Oh. I know we get to meet somebody important. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth the wait. Oh. <laughs> actually very solution focused. So, uh, you know, um, what's going to work? What difference would it make if we did this? And and, and you know, it, um, she, she she's she's a cow sometimes, but she's lovely. Um, oh wow! So she means quite a lot. Um, mm. um yeah so she's my active relaxation you know we've got a a local beach that um is 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 full of um um pebbles and at low tide is, is a big strip of sand and what greyhounds need to do is to run mm. and, and so I take her over the beach and she's so excited and then and off she goes and you know um it, it's it's good no it's very good um mm. so yeah so i i'm i, I do, I do I, Again, not getting too philosophical, but I know I'm aware of my age, and I'm aware of, you know, um, I, I want to pack everything in. I, no. I want, I want to go out. I want to go out kicking and screaming, and you know, um, not not punk being, rock are you? Punk rock are you? Maybe, maybe. I was never a punk. Um, I, I was more <laughs> of a, um, a mod and a kind of what I call a scooter skin. So I, I can imagine you being a mod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Well, and flash. I'm going to yeah. read. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read some uh, messages that. So we have an FBS team WhatsApp group. And they're gonna kill me for reading this out. And this is some of the messages. Talia, be quiet, please. Tara, how'd you get a five-year-old to be quiet? I'm not asking you that because you're sweets. female. I'm asking you because you work in schools. Give her sweets. 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 Give her a sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna read out some of the messages. I just like to say I don't give out sweets at school. <laughs> no, no, no. Fine. Right, so message number one. <clears throat> I like this Paul Hansen fella. He's wicked. He's joined this English. Oh look, it's Tara. Hello, Tara. I like Paul's no nonsense. Oh no, too much pressure. And he's working Islington. He's my guy. <laughs> I take it all back. He's a Spurs fan because he's an Arsenal fan. <laughs> that man is awesome. Jason, are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. I think he's awesome. Like Matt said, very straight talking. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, Jonas. What was that? 
So you must have asked something. Is Joe okay? He suddenly left. Research gate. Seriously, these conversations are going on and on and on and on. And on. Research gate is an open forum for people to publish and put their research and articles, yeah. presentations, um, books, whatever on. It's it, it, again, you know. Let's let's talk about access. You know. Um, some of the books that Solution Focus people write, some of the research, some of the stuff, it's always guarded. Like, you know, if you want to give me money, if you want to be in my club, you can see it. I put it on an open access forum. You know, that, that's, that's yeah. exclusive. Mm. Yeah, love that. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay, so. five minutes, I guess. <laughs> Ask me anything. We've got five minutes to go, and I and we want to know what's next. Yes. For me. Yeah. Um, look, I've never. I know worked, you've got this secret thing going on, but other than I've that, I've never worked in a job for more than five years. I'm, I'm a gypsy. Um, my partner and I've been together 21 years. We've had 12 houses. Um, I, 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 you know, um, I, I'm, I, I, I don't settle very well. Um. And I can see me working in this job till I finish my career, which is seven years' time. Um, I mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what's next. And, and I think that's something that keeps me a little bit fresh. I don't make long-term plans. I don't um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, look, you know, and, and let's, let's not kind of end on, on, on a bummer. I, I, um, I, I spent my childhood being quite a, a, a scared child. I spent my um, teenage and youth years being an angry young man, um, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite a content older man, and, and that's that's okay mm -hmm. for me. Um, I still have dark places in my head, and um, I find that the more I do, the less those dark places can invade me. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'll just, just keep doing what I do. I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what's next for me. Um, I've, I've thought seriously, I mean, I've been, um, playing and coaching badminton for a long time and as I say this year is the first year of an operation for a while and I've seriously thought that my body is kind of not up to what I'm trying to make it do anymore so I don't know maybe a new sport um, <coughs> maybe something different I, I, I don't know um, I, I love um, I love music you know Jonas and I, and I trade music every day um, every morning I wake up, there's a new song from Jonas, and every evening when I go to bed, I put a new song on to Jonas. We have this, this shared Spotify list, and I collect vinyl. And um, I, I, I just um, right now life's good. Um, I desperately want to come back to Europe um, to see my sons, and um, you know I, I miss them them dreadfully. Um, I. Um, I've got this this idea of when we retire, Sue so, so and I have talked about it, when we retire, um, we're going to either build a house or we're going to sell up and, and, and travel or we're going to spend six months in Europe and six months in New Zealand. So I don't like winter. I like the warmth. You know, um, I, I don't know. Um, I'm a 58-year-old fat diabetic and, and I'll see where the world, world takes me, really. Um, <laughs> I like it. Uh, what's the um, question about strength base and SF? Okay. I don't know who wrote that. Um, okay. I think I think it's Mark. I need to look, have a quick look. But I think it's Mark. So I've put an article about that on LinkedIn a few years ago, about five mm. or six years ago. Um, I think Solution Focus um, acknowledges and amplifies strengths. I think if you start looking for strengths, it becomes your agenda. I think it's. I don't believe it's a strength-based approach, although I think it acknowledges strengths. Um, I, I, I think um, the traditional strength-based approaches are a little bit cultish. You know, um, always be positive, always look for the strengths, when actually sometimes your life's falling apart. Um, and, and I think you know sometimes. Um, yeah, I, I'm not too disappointed when people say it's strength based, but I don't think it is strength based. I think we acknowledge and amplify strengths when, when, when they come up. I hope that answers that question. Love it. Mm -hmm. That's a great answer. Yeah, really good answer. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. And we have come to the end, guys. I've really enjoyed oh, it, Chloe. No, oh, I've really enjoyed it. It's gone so quickly. 
I know. I know. We've got, we've got, we've got to have a follow up. Have, yeah. Yeah, we're going to have no, a follow up. No, no, no. We, we're going to we're going to have you guys back to. Uh, Tara and I are going to be like um, the the. We, we Tara and I can tell tell you guys how good or rubbish you are. We're going to have Guy Shen and Matt join as well, so we can have a FBS chat with SF and Music. Ooh, cool. Guy, Guy and I go back a long way too. So um, Guy and I actually did were on the first Solution Focus Masters course um, in, in the world, as far as I'm aware. And um, Guy yeah. and I were first two that passed. Um, and um, yeah, we um, we could probably tell a few stories about a few. Um, um, evenings that we spent together, Guy and I. <laughs> but I'll let you oh know. yeah, I can look forward to that. Well, we want to hear about that. Uh, yeah, and I, I, so watch out, watch out for an email from me with some dates on there, um, okay. and we'll be having some guys on to talk about SF24, uh, 2020 and 2021. So you know, it's um, we've got a lot of things coming up, but definitely, you guys, this this has been absolutely amazing. So any any last yeah, words from the three of you? Just thank uh, you from me. I mean, I, I've enjoyed it. It's been, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's been great fun. I'm off to go to work in a minute, and um, uh, I've got a big long day ahead, and um, that's, that's great. I, I don't mind. Um, I, I like I like the energy here. It's fantastic. Thank you so much, Aisha. It was lovely. Thank you for hosting this, Aisha. Um, really lovely. Yeah, thank you for really inviting nice. me. Guys, along. I did nothing. Yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Pretend to do admin in the background. <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> um, but if you, uh, if you guys could just wait there for a minute, as Jonas and Tara knows, this is where we say goodbye privately. But for anyone else, we will see you very soon with another FBS chat. And my calendar's not open, so I can't tell you who that was. But you'll find us. Oh no, it's David oh, Haynes. Right. David oh, Haynes. Thursday at 12 p.m. UK time, and I've got to keep remembering to say UK time. So. Thursday, 12 p.m. UK time. Guys, remind me about that because I'll probably forget in five minutes. Um, right. So see you guys soon. Take care. Bye. And you guys stay there.